Hi, my name is Lina and welcome to this two-part episode about automation. So this week's video is the episode one where I will talk about automation in an arrangement view. But next week is the episode two of this series where I talk about clip automation. So be sure to come here also next week to watch that. So please keep on watching. <laughs> Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. As you can see, I have a new microphone. It's a Sontronics Podcast Pro microphone. So now you can hear my sweet voice a bit, a bit better. And also, check this out. Merge out now. And also, it's just a limited time. So I'm going to put a link down below so you can get yourself one of these beauties. But hey, less about this than this. Let's get into this tut tutorial. Tut -tut. Tutorial about automation. Cool. So there's four main areas of automation in arrangement view. The first one here is a button called automation mode that shows us the track uh, envelopes that allows us to then automate things on the track. This area also includes drop down menus as well as automation lanes, which are with minuses and pluses marked in here. The second area of automation is drop down menu, which is on the right click or control click or command click. And you should have an envelope showing while you're clicking so that you see all these things. So what this drop down menu gives us is a full control over our automation. And we're, we're going to look at that in a minute. Third area of automation in arrangement view is the recording related aspects of automation. And what those are, are in the here in the top. So the main key point is the automation arm button. Fourth, area is the parameter drop down menu. So example, if I go to this pan parameter on the right here and I right click it, we get a drop down menu, which shows also automation related information. Okay. So let's talk about automation as a concept and how does it work? So, so let's automate something. First things first we need to do is create breakpoints. Breakpoints are these little dots when you hover over the red line, you see that there's this blue dot under your mouse that appears. Those are called breakpoints. Breakpoints are basically uh, these tools that allows us to customize the line and break it in pieces so that we can create these different figures, uh, high <laughs> things that rise and things that go lower. For example, let's say we're in minus nine DP here and I want to go this with the drum. Uh, I want to fade it out completely on this track created two breakpoints and I also taken down the le later breakdown point. So you see that the volume goes normal all the way here. Then it just kind of goes down, 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 down. Just when it goes to the other breakpoint, which then takes down the rest of the track as well. Okay, let's listen to that. So we go lower, lower, lower. And you can see on here on the uh, session view, you can see that there is this red point but what is that ball on the volume control and that is basically means that it's been automated and it's moving automatically down moves moves down 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 automatically without me doing anything so that's what basically automation is that's the concept of it okay so these drop down menus allow us to see these different aspects that we can we can automate and basically in Ableton Live, you can automate almost everything. So let's just put a auto filter to this, this track. An example, we have a plugin on the track. I just go and click anything on it, like the frequency button that has now brackets around it. You can see that parameter is now selected. If I click that, what's happened on the automation line and the drop down menus, it says auto filter frequency. <gasps> so whatever I click LFO, auto filter, LFO amount, <gasps> anything I click on anywhere in Ableton, basically, it will feed the information to the automation uh, drop down menus and I can just start automating that. So let's say frequency example, we can create a little frequency shifter there like that to the drums. Bring it in, bring it in. Like that. 
One of my favorite effects, by the way, ever is creating an auto filter like that, automating the frequency in, and you can use different filters, like example, high pass filter, low pass filter, and bring filter sweeps. So they create a lot of movement. Try that, honestly. If you want to see only automated parameters, only in the list, so example, we have now auto filter, automated and mixer automated, we can only see them. So it might simplify a bit for you. If I want to see everything again, I just so show all parameters again. Let's just have a look at adding and deleting uh, breakpoints a little bit more. So if I just add a couple there, so I just click on the red line. If I want to delete any of them, I click them again and they delete. Otherwise, if I want to delete them, I highlight an area which is very highlighting is one of the most important part of automation in Able to Live. I highlight an area and I hover over anything that's been automated like that. The breakpoints that end up inside of the highlighted area will turn blue. I just hover over them so that they're all blue that I want to delete and press delete button and that will delete all of them breakpoints that are inside of the highlighted area. Highlighting areas and moving things. So let's say we have an automation like this. We highlight this. And another way is we again do exactly the same. We highlight the area. We, I hover over the uh, breakpoints. And I, if I now hold down and move one of the breakpoints, I can move all of the breakpoints same time that are inside of the highlighted area. But I can move them away from the highlighted area as well. Also, if you want to move things smaller values, you can hold down shift while I move it and you can see that it moves much slower and in smaller value. Holding down alt is a fun tool because example, if I have, I have a straight line between these two breakpoints, I hold down alt and you see that it highlights the area between them. And what I can do is add a curve to this breakpoint between these breakpoints. Usually when you highlight in Ableton Live, it just looks blue like that. Nothing else appears. But when we have the automation mode on, basically there is these great fun tools that appear on the left corners, in the middles of the highlighted area called skew envelope. And the skew envelope allows me to uh, manipulate the envelope in a very fun way. So I can just go and stretch anything that is between the envelope and all the automation will be manipulated. If you hold down shift, I can again go in smaller values. If I hold down alt, I can do two of the opposite controls of the um, envelope same time. So it's a very fun tool to manipulate the envelope. And what that button is, is a lockdown mode. Usually if that button is not on, what we can do is just, I can just drag this sample here and what happens is that the envelope will copy with it so it will move with the actual sample so there's a connection between the sample and the envelope but what happens when this lock is on when i move the sample the envelope does not come with it it has left the sample and they have broken up they have no connection anymore divorce has happened and now they are crying alone so that's what's happening. So basically what's happening is the sample and the envelope connection is broken and the envelope is tied into timeline instead of to the sample. Great success. So the plus button here, if I click from there, you can see that the another lane appears and the automation that was on the first lane of the track will now has its own lane. Okay, so example, if I want to create another automation, example, I click the uh, panning there. So to create one there, I can just add it that to another lane as well. So this is a very easy way for me to see a lot of automation at the same time, just see that everything's kind of working harmoniously together. And there is this uh, triangle here and it, I can just hide the stack of the lanes away. There we go. The minus button will delete the lane, but it's not gonna delete the actual automation. So do not worry if you press, press that it will still be there. There we go. It's not disappeared anywhere. Hey, in this point, please subscribe to this channel. Please hit the bell icon and also share it to all your friends. I also have a Patreon account with full of extra content and all kind of fun music production stuff. So link down below for that as well. Okay, let's get back into this tutorial. Okay.
So, we come to the second point, which is the drop down menu. And let's have a look what happens in the drop down menu. So, first one here draw mode, also the pen on the top right corner, same thing. If I now start drawing things, everything, the drawing is following the grid. If I hold down command and hold down pen, what happens is that the, the, the grid disappears and I can create a beautiful drawing, just freehand draw like that. Art piece by LNA does audio stuff. Okay, next thing on the list is basic stuff. Cut, duplicate, delete are exactly the same as anywhere else. You can copy and paste automation to the timeline. You can duplicate the, uh, the automation in timeline. You just need to highlight the area and then do the action. Any of these actions here. Otherwise, we have also clear envelope and sim uh, simplify envelope. Clear envelope is fun because it just takes everything away. But then example, let's say simplify envelope. So I have that area where there's a bit more these little breakpoints. If I highlight the area like this and I go simplify envelope, bo, 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 it just deleted the unnecessary uh, breakpoints, which simplified it and makes it easier to edit and customize. And now we have also insert shapes. So the top row shapes are the basic shapes that are the wave shapes that we are used to anyway in our everyday life when we work with sound. Under there, we have these more adaptive shapes. So let's just try them out. So we have that there. And if I just put uh, this shape here, it will just do the uh, triangle anyway. So if I go with uh, this shape here, you see that it connects automatically to the uh, breakpoint that was already there. So that was all the functions of the drop down menu. Next thing we're going to be looking at is a recording and recording related functions. So let's just clear the envelope and let's record some panning automation. So the first things first I need to make sure in arrangement view is that I need to go to the top here and automation arm is activated. That needs to be activated so that I can get some automation done. Go where the parameter, select the one that I want to automate. So I want to control this panning here. And next thing I need to just re press record. And start playing with the panning while it's playing. Ooh, 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 ooh. So basically what I did is that I just press record and start moving a parameter either either with mouse or a controller on your uh, which is connected to your Ableton Live. Both create automation just when you touch the parameter and there we go. But what happens if I would like to just try a different automation? I don't want to delete this automation yet. Well, what I can do is just start playing and I start moving the parameter and the automation that we had there has turned gray. So I can try things on the top of it, but it just makes the automation we created una unavailable and therefore we can just try things out. What happens now is that you can see that on the top there is a button that has turned red. That is called re-enable automation button. It has a couple functions, main functions. When we press that, uh, it will make sure that it enables all the uh, automation that has turned gray. But also it just kind of shows us and indicates us when something is being enabled. Therefore, let's just have a look what happens here. So let's say we have both of these un uh, automated like that and both of them are enabled. So if I now want to click this red button, it re-enables everything again. Here we go. And that takes us to the point number four, which is parameter drop down menu. And what if I would like to just re-enable one of them on a time? I don't want to use that button and it's all, all its mighty power. So instead of pressing now here, I go to the parameter, right click it, control click it, co uh, command click it, uh, two finger click it, however your computer works, click it. And now we have a lot of options. Show automation, show automation and a new lane. Lanes we already talked about. It's just the different lanes. This thing. Re-enable automation. 
there we go. So I only re-enabled, re enabled this automation button. This is still enabled, which is because of this. And this button is indicating it. Also, there's also other stuff here. Example, show modulation. And we're going to be talking about modulation in the next week's video. Return uh, to default and delete automation. And delete to, uh, return to default is actually fun because it uh, enables this automation, but it shows what was the default value of the parameter. So it doesn't delete what we had, but it just shows the original value, which can help us sometimes to see where it was. Someone is calling me, but that was actually the tutorial anyhow. Hey, and today's question comes from Hugo Pereira. Pereira? He says, hi, love your videos. This is uh, for sure a workflow improvement for me. Yes, it was on the workflow um, workflow video. I've been wondering which microphone you use. Okay, so in that video, I use AKG P420, which has been my loyal friend for a long time. But now I have new two friends from Sontronics. And uh, so this one will be my new friend for a long time. So that's the Podcast Pro Dynamic Microphone phone and I will be using it in my videos like this when I talk. I also have another new friend ooh, in this beautiful case and I literally got them today so I'm very excited to show them so thank you for the question <laughs> and it's this STC2. I will be using this in my new EP which will come out later to this year but the whole EP process I'm actually vlogging the whole experiences on my channel so if you want to see the vlogging process and me actually using this i will be doing the vlogs on my channel as well as uh, more walkthroughs of exactly what i did with the microphones with the production with the whole process also in my patreon so that's where will be all the walkthroughs hey thank you so much for watching please subscribe to this channel please hit the bell icon please share it to all your friends and family especially your mother and uh i'll see you here next sunday because i post every single sunday as you know okay bye